What up, what up, what up, what up? How y'all doing? It's still me, the one and only KD Otaro, your regular host at the show, The Art Atmosphere, brought to you by The Pond Collective. For those of you who are new to this place, I, I don't really blame you, but come on. We're all about life. We're all about young people. We're all about, we're all about the universe. We're all about creativity. We're all about art. And we're all about the business. And we're all about fun, too. I mean, we're not, we're not that old. So, yeah, it's not a bad thing for us to have fun, is it? So, And as usual, you know how it is. We vibe. We go deep. We go surface level. We go all around. We touch every part. And we try to, like, understand each other as artists. And you already know how it goes. The usual i got i got me somebody special he's a big artist he's young but he's a big artist so it's got one of those artists i call small but mighty basically but this this, this this guy is awesome i mean you look him up on artsy he's doing big things man i mean it's not it's not small fry it's no small fries man i mean i don't know how to hype but See, I don't even need to hype, man. It's worth it's worth speech for itself. So I'm talking about no other than the one and only Ikara Chisom Chief Adat. I got the surname right, right? Bro, you did. Bro. <laughs> I beg. I beg. Like, this Queen's English is too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll worry, we'll freestyle out anyhow. <laughs> ah yeah, this level I did on, man. You see, I don't know how to hype after hyping for like bro. <laughs> Are you guys like that? <laughs> I hope your trip down here wasn't really stressful. You know the whole Lagos um, just, vibes and stuff like that, man. I Traffic it, even on the weekend. It's it's Sunday, so yeah, it's, it's great. We came here, it was nice. Yeah, yeah, that, that's nice dope. It's dope, you, man. man. So like, I know you because mm. we've been through art residency to before. I mean, for those of y'all don't know, we made him will go like two years or more back, yeah, and yeah. we've known each other for a while because we've been in, in like a boot camp program before slash art residency but many people who don't really know you can you just like give us a brief introduction or oh, more okay so the thing now is you need to tell me <laughs> how you want me to <laughs> like just tell us just tell us i mean people know um Igero mm. achison slash chief let me just go with chief right up for okay. now so people know chief so just okay, tell so, us a little so more about yourself all, just a short bio i hope i hope like so many people will listen to this and I beg, like, Kiara, <laughs> Chisum, add the chief father. Yeah. yeah add, like, I remember you like, said that. You <laughs> said that. The first time I, I, I spoke to him, that he emphasized on that. He was like, add chief father. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, the thing is, like, a lot of um, people you know, they think, like, the chief father is outside the name. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I think that's a good place to start from. Yeah. Um, so, my dad was an artist and you know the whole vibe then my dad had to quit his art to uh, get a lucrative job in, in quotes yeah uh, like being an artist and um growing up i found art like very early as a child that was something that i can't i can't answer the question like when did you start creating exactly. because i've always remembered that that was as long as, yeah, as, as, long as, as i can remember yeah. Yeah, um, so okay, this story I would have to like do a lot of cut and join because I was, <laughs> I was talking about Chifada and I don't want to move out of it, yeah. Of okay, course. yeah, so um, the name Chifada is like it's a tribute to my dad and it's a very important aspect of like my creative practice, and um, a lot of galleries, um, a lot of people like. They, f they they try to take the chief father away and i yeah, i want yeah. the chief father to be there because it's something that i fought for it's, it's like a, it's like um an identity sort yeah of? it's like it's like a dream that's yeah. attached to my name i feel like it wouldn't be complete without the chief father so, so that's like saying it's not a nickname no it's, it's not, like part of you it's, now it's no it's not a nickname yeah. bro it's it's a vision <laughs> yeah that's that's what it is to me it's a vision it's um it's a reminder to myself like you yeah. feel me it's a reminder to myself um uh i if my dad had like seen people that he could look up to um i'm sure he would have still pursued his car his dream of being an artist so word, like word. so a part of the dream in the name Chifada is me wanting to be the, someone that can be an example that you can you can live a dream of 
you know, being an artist. Yeah, so True, though. that's what it is. True. Yeah. And, um, no, while well, I was looking through your website, yeah, he does have a website for those of you who don't know. So I will put that, we'll put that in the link in the description so you see the website. And um, while I was going through your um, mm. website, I kind of like, so you started your career professionally as 18, 18 mm. and there's a whole lot of stuff going like on your um bio like yeah. more like a bio sort of and how was that for you starting your career professionally at 18 because i mean we, we before we start we came here we had a conversation you're still in school right mm. so like that um being a student and being a full-time artist yeah how you how, how you merge that first of all what were you studying in school the people like to know what you're studying <laughs> Okay, so the thing is, I'll would, I'll would start with this story. Um, so my parents, you know, the normal yeah. Nigerian parent thing, they want you to be. My mom felt like I was too intelligent to be an artist. <laughs> you know what? I understand. I understand now because she was working so hard to provide food and stuff. So she doesn't understand how. After hustling that much, I would want to be an artist. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. So I, it has to be something that would pay back, you know. I had to be a doctor or something. Yeah, but somehow, I found my way into convincing my parents that I can't stand the sight of blood. So I, I'm good with computers, so I'll be a computer scientist. <laughs> so that's, that's the first step. <laughs> so I, the time came now to write Jamb. I went through the courses. Like I remember before that, when I was trying to get the money for the jam phone from my dad, and I was telling him, okay, so I'm going to be a computer scientist. I'll study computer science, but once in a while in school, I'll go to the final department. Yeah, are you still talking about that? <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I when I was applying, I was looking out for courses that had drawings and you know I couldn't go to architecture. I knew I wasn't I wasn't yeah. so good with lines and stuff. But I saw um urban and regional planning. It looked like something that was a little bit of fun. The town planning, yeah, okay. So applied for town planning. You know, the admission came out, I got the admission, told my dad I, I'm sorry, I could I did not get the computer science. So <laughs> what we are doing now is urban and regional planning. So my hopes were that I, when I get to school, I'll have the chance to draw. You know, while doing assignments, I'll also draw. Yeah. You know? But then I got to school. My brother. <laughs> <laughs> he <I>, took. <laughs> <laughs> I got to school and the drawings were... So town planning is like advanced architecture so arch architects deal with planning buildings yeah but in town planning you have to you, you you plan the towns and cities and create provisions so for that's like to, to, to if i find to fire your dungeon nah, architecture nah, you went to something way worse I, I i nearly i nearly lost my mind but that was the only chance i had i that was my only shot at freedom and i was like Okay, I got into the university in 2016. So my first year was hell. Um, 2018 was my second year. And um, it was in my second year I decided, man, this is the space you have. You have to do this now or never. Yeah. So it's crazy. Um, started with, um, before then I was doing like drawings. Um, but it was in 2018 I decided to like, started collecting commission, started being intentional about being a professional artist, studying a lot about being an artist. It was crazy. Combined. It's still crazy. I'm still in school now. Right? Yeah. School, school is... The school is, school, yeah, school yeah, school we know for that, me right? is like the being... Striking school all. for me is like being in the military because... <laughs> bro, I, I, go to, I go to exam halls with my paint clothes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow no that that would be that's like an experience uh, like, though no, i mean no, it's not now man. you think about it it's kind of like an experience like, it's not because i always get into trouble with lecturers and they're like you're a serious student but you don't take you don't think i'm taking your life seriously <laughs> <laughs> the typical nigerian yeah, lecturers with all that why you come late to class 
why am I coming to an exam hall late? You know, those are the things that I have to deal with. I read like a night before the exam. Yeah, that means and then always you have, work, you have, man. Last you have, minute. You have deadlines of <laughs> delivering works to a gallery, and you also have tests and exams. Wow. And you have drawings. I'm talking about massive drawings, wow. big, large scale drawings. And like, it got tougher my third year, fourth year, and we started doing like really advanced plans. Like, so it was a nightmare. But then, thinking about it, it's even giving me chills. Like, going back wow. to school, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's crazy. Because, and also in school, I'm someone that people look up to, like, for assistance yeah, so i have right. this responsibility in school and i also have this responsibility to myself trying to balance all these things and make everything work bro well, nah. that's that's a lot man that, yeah, that's, but, that's a lot but i think there's a resilience and um like i i i told myself that if i could make it happen then i can make anything happen so there's this kind of confidence that i have now that i think has gotten into my practice that you know I'm, i can like do anything that i want to you know, yeah okay that's uh that's exciting like Bro, it's so exciting it's to, listen to, exciting. Yes, because, to listen to because because well, i put myself in that uh, position i mean mm. i've always wanted to be an artist i feel i'm one of those few nigerians who actually wanted to be something right from childhood and they yeah. actually are living the dream and getting to the university, I started the University of Benin, it was mm. quite hard, like really difficult. I, I was like, okay, yeah, I could balance it with the course I'm studying, but you know how lecturers try to like frustrate I'm, I'm you? Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, man, but one thing I learned was that there's no balance. <laughs> there's never. There's no ba- there has to be priority. That's the thing. And like it got to a point where I just, I just had to make my art my priority because art saved me. It saves me. And at the point, I had to ask myself, like, what am I doing? What am I? Why am I? It's like having someone that is in love with you, did you, did you and I, they are putting the person as a side chick. I almost quit school, to be honest, because yeah, I, 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 I put my I put my career on, on pause. Like, yeah. school wasn't letting me do anything. I missed exhibitions. I was getting mails from people. I would like you to be part of this, but the mail comes at the time I'm having an exam. Mm. And I was like, is this exam really important yeah you know is it really important and then you start thinking about it and it just gets a little bit overwhelming at some point and i i, I totally I, I relate to what you're saying to a certain level yeah. and i mean i i feel there are other artists who are like going through this you know i paused the career i had i had to because it, it was it was it was needed because i didn't want to go to school at first and now i went to school yeah. The career was shaky like what are you doing i was getting galleries weren't even sending me emails anymore because we've talked to this person he says it's in school and mm. you know this kind of stuff so i totally relate to you i, st- I stopped I, right. I i stopped telling people i was in school so i knew it, like i said before i knew like you know i i i i lived in lagos but i went to travel to futo to be in school that was my only chance of proving myself to myself yeah yeah but then i had to also prove myself to my family yeah so this isn't necessary but i just think i just have to put it to show you the hustle yeah. so i had to maintain the first class <laughs> and i also have to maintain a career that has to work for me wow so like I, <laughs> man i'm just <laughs> listen to the, i'm just like all i'm seeing is responsibilities goals no, yeah yeah you know you know the thing the thing is my mom knows who she sent to school exactly. my, my my parents know so if if they ask for my grades and it's something short of their expectations they know something is wrong something is wrong and then they, they would ask what's going on okay do you want to study something else i just that was like I just had to make it work. So, I, would I you say like you're not really pressured? I'm not. Like, like, is there any pressure from any side that for well, this? There's crazy pressure. There's crazy pressure. Like I said, to to keep up with the first class. There's wow. crazy pressure to to achieve my own dreams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think to an extent now it's it's easier. 
because my parents understand that okay now this there's no stopping him you yeah. know at this point you can't stop him but then i also need to like give them the certificates and say okay yeah wow. this is this is what you yeah, wanted <laughs> and now you've gotten it so that's yeah, that's yeah. really that's really insane man but for me th- thanks for sharing that man because that's like i feel that's like really really deep oh. that's like really really damn appreciate that man but now let's uh, move further okay. um let's talk about your works you know there's something unique about your pieces mm-hmm. that um i mean whenever i see it I'll, i'm always drawn to it mm-hmm. and um, okay talk about the um boy without a silver spoon that piece when I saw that piece, first thing that I, I'm, I'm okay, I'm an artist. I deal mm-hmm. with colors. I, I like I like a lot of colors. But there's something else that the narrative behind it. Right? Could you like just shed a little bit light on it? Just shed a little light on it. On that painting. On that particular piece. Like what what brought about that idea? Because usually I don't talk about people's works, but I just had to pick that one. What brought about that idea for that painting? <laughs> <laughs> so that that painting, you have a boy running. Yeah. Man, that was me, man. <laughs> no, no, no. At no, like, at the point, I felt like I was, I was, I was in a race, but I did not understand who was chasing me. Mm. What am I running from? Like, what's all this pressure about? What am I trying to prove to myself, my parents? There are people also around. Like I said before in school, like, okay, so they give a project, you know how Nigerian lecturers and like nobody teaches you anything. So just the few people in class are the people that would have to assist the rest. So there are people that are literally looking up, hey, oh, chief father, I beg hmm. this project, I don't know what to do. And I understand them. And wow. like there are people that my closest friend, I made a painting of him. I, I, I've made paintings of him severally. He would have dropped out. Wow. He said this to me like he would have dropped out if I wasn't, if I wasn't his classmate, if I wasn't his friend, if I wasn't helping him. Yeah, wow. and that's an extra responsibility. Wow. <laughs> and because I feel like I no now I can't I can't if I if I decide. Okay, now, like, fuck school. Like, okay, sorry, can I? Yeah, no, sure, sure. <laughs> I mean, feel free, feel okay, free. Okay, so if I say when I'm done with this. I'm not do I'm, I can deal with my parents, yeah. But then there are also other people that I just can't deal with the thought that nah, I've left these people behind. So mm-hmm. that was the mental state I was trying to capture in that painting. Wow. And the title, The Boy Without a Silver Spoon, there are two paintings. Yeah, there's the two one paintings. and there's a two. That's the second painting from the two paintings. The f- that first painting is very personal, and that's why. I haven't shared it. Yeah, yeah. But that second painting was like me, the responsibilities and everything, trying to run away. And like the whole concept of life being a race. Wow. And then also at that point, I was dealing with some, some outward stuff, like some dealers that were like, you know, when you have this dream of getting to a certain point, okay, like if I work with these people, I, if I work with this, I'm trying to be careful with my words. Mm-hmm. So like you have dreams of like, if I work with these people, I would be set for, you know, my career would get to a point yeah, where, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but then you work with these people and then these people are trying to rip you off oh and then it God. drains, <laughs> it drains your, your creative energy. Exactly. And you're like, is this what I've been fighting for? Like, that's what the whole painting is about. Like. It's, it's very personal, and I think this is the first I think, time. I, I like, think the more you explain, the, it's, it's like layers. Yeah, you just open yeah, it yeah, more yeah, and more yeah, layers, yeah. and yeah, that's like, that's really awesome. Like, what am I? What, is this? Is this? Is this, Is it all worth it? All the responsibilities, all the hustle, all the trying to be here. You know, so like that's what the painting is about. And without the silver spoon, it's a reference to the book. Yeah, the story yeah. about the boy, you know, trying to come up like he came from nothing and he, he had to nothing, constantly yeah. prove his honesty to people. Yeah, yeah. So like that was that's an old book. I don't even remember anything. Yeah, I that. remind you, I, I remind don't... you, the boy, had, the boy came. I, from I a, think I'll probably go look for that book and refresh my memory and all to, like that. Prove his honesty to to so many people. He had to keep proving himself. You know, so well, like, that that's that's yeah. really that's really beautiful, man. It's really beautiful. I mean, like having this conversation with you is yeah. 
it's like just opening more and more lanes to who Chief Fade is. I'm, I'm definitely going to be calling you Chief Fade, man. <laughs> and um, I, I think I think the fact that you have all of this going on with you and you keep pushing even at a pretty young age is mind blowing. Oh, it's my, it's it's inspiring. It's, I'm telling you, man. Like, I mean, I know there are times where you just like you mentioned, you just want to like quit like man i should just leave all of this and just focus on one chapter mm. on just one page of my life and you still have reflect back because because of the kind of heart that you have man that's that's big man that that's that's big that's that's really huge and i think a lot of people out there should like take something from this man because you know being human is one thing but being a human that people could like look up to is something else and that's quite beautiful no, no listening to you share all of this Bro. man it's like it's like triggering something in me yeah. some, something special and i kind of like appreciate all of that but moving on moving I, on though so let's before before we move on yeah i want to give you like a shout out to oscar yeah yeah because when i was trying to i was looking for people that that were like had the same struggle with me yeah and i found out i discovered oscar I knew Oscar before then, but then I we we, we became close, and at then Oscar was um, studying architecture, yeah, and was also doing his art. And I remember when I first went to Oscar's hostel, and I saw his architectural assignments one side and hmm. his portraits one side. One side. Oh man, <laughs> I I. I he was looking so stressed, bro. <laughs> like when when I met Oscar, Oscar, like the introduction and stuff, we had a, a conversation, and he was sitting on the bed and he slept off. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, he might have forgotten. I wish he was here. I wish he's here. Um, he might have forgotten, but I can't remember that. Like that's that's like a memory that I re- keep reflecting on. If this guy, um could do it then i can't do it so like so that's like the importance of having yeah. people to look up to that and that's why like i said before like i want something i want to be someone that people can use as an example, as an example. yeah yeah that's that's beautiful if i didn't met oscar <laughs> man probably probably, probably something just, else uh, <laughs> i would have said after okay you know what it's not it cannot be done after school yeah, would, yeah that's probably that's, after that's, school, that's crazy I man for a job i'll now be a bank <laughs> <laughs> that's that's dope man okay okay uh, moving on i, I was saying yeah. uh, okay today's episode we're, we're all about identity okay and i didn't even introduce that at first but you've opened layers that i never really thought would was there and i'm pretty mm-hmm. sure people who know you don't really know most of this this part about you and it's quite beautiful it's just like an honor that you're sharing this with us and that's that's really really dope and and all that so like i want to like ask this question it's more like like um a juxtaposition of a, mm. a certain thing so um talking about identity um i see i see it in your works and all that what would you say is your um like something you'd look up to when you're preparing your process you know before you create an artwork there's that process you go you mm. go through so like what is that What's that thing you bring into the picture to still maintain your identity as chief father? That people who see your work and be like, this is chief father's work. Whether the style is changed, but the narrative or something is just just speaks chief father in it. How would you say you you bring that into motion when you're planning your work, what, like your process and all of that? Man, as an artist, being yourself is like one of the most difficult things. And it's difficult because it's very easy to do. Like, yeah like okay it's very easy for you to lose yourself while trying to be yourself (laughs) i'm I'm going to take this again like being yourself is very difficult because losing yourself is a very easy thing wow so say for that's word that's that's say for example as an artist um you you're on Instagram. This is a, yeah, it's a very basic example. When you go through art talks and art talks and art talks, you internalize like so many things that you see online, and then you reflect those things in your work. Yeah, <clears throat> and um, there is this question I keep asking myself about what identity is. So, I I've, I'm in a residency. I'm currently in a residency, and I had this. Con- I raised this conversation one time. 
um so if you say your identity is who you are mm -hmm. then who are you like really True. because like you are constantly like influenced by so many other things yeah yeah and um there are so many factors um that also like affects that affect like the image that you project so you can project an image that, but that's not necessarily who you are exactly. so now, let, let me come back to like the question of my process um what i try to do what i try to do bro i'm a very serious of a thinker <laughs> no, welcome real, to like, the club <laughs> i'm a very i know man like every layer in my work now now i'm beginning to gain confidence i feel yeah. now i'm beginning to understand that i used to overthink because i wasn't confident because i was trying to be sure yeah and sometimes not being sh bro i'm learning things that now that are like like ah, they, we, I had this conversation with Oscar yesterday, last night. It was a crazy conversation, and Oscar said something like, "Intellectuals shouldn't be artists." <laughs> yeah, because you are trying to be, you are, you, are, you want to make everything work. Yeah, like, bring that be perfectionist. An, you, should, you should be an engineer, <laughs> you know, uh, an architect, and not an artist. Like the process of overthinking is like. It's getting better for me now because going through the process and like the process can be very can be very tough sometimes the ups and the downs yeah. at times when you're like this painting this painting is so powerful like i can see where this painting is going to and at times when you're like what the fuck? <laughs> i should probably be a carpenter or something <laughs> <laughs> what i say it's what i tell me wait i think i just leave this art and go open a church and i'm not Bro, even no, a christian <laughs> But then when the end process, when you sit back and you look at your painting and you're like, if this works out, you know, when you do that for like two, three paintings, you yeah. become more confident that even though the process doesn't make sense, the end results yeah. will definitely make sense. So then it alleviates, like it takes away from your your stress of trying to make, make everything perfect and, you know, yeah. And put together so yeah, I, that's, that's now right. now yeah. i'm i'm learning to be like my recent works are like so there's a painting the latest painting i shared on my instagram i thought about everything i i i, I used to try to think of the color scheme the composition <laughs> everything like, and i i i like have reference i've studied like so many works that when I want to create something, I have an idea. I yeah. somehow have an idea of someone that has done something like that. Yeah, something close yeah. to that. Or even if I don't, I try to find someone. Try to find, yeah. But I tried the night before the painting, man. I was frustrated and I went to sleep. I woke up the next morning. Bro, I had leftover paint and I took my brush. And because I wasn't sure the painting was going to work. So yeah, I just I just started. I just, just let yeah. I call it um letting the art speak bro whatever it is art man i took the brush and i just i just went on the canvas and bro when i had breakfast and i came back i knew that yeah this was the answer i was looking for <laughs> you know you know uh when when we first um when we when i first met you at yeah. some um, where we the whole boot camp thingy yeah. and um you know hearing you speak and how you um yeah, how you, yeah how you process a lot of stuff i i just know that this person is a really smart person and i, I i'm kind of like drawn the to the people boot, the boot camp i was asking a lot of questions yeah that's the thing that's <laughs> the thing and not just any questions mm. the question no it's different when somebody just asks random questions nah, people get, and people this this was sense. like intellectual question i was learning some things from the questions you were asking really? if i remember correctly i was because i was like oh yeah I, why did i even think of this he just brought this up and that's really nice and that's why i started admiring your personality and your career as an artist and it's, i think it's like really really beautiful man like like it's it's really dope what you're doing for yourself for the people around you mm. and for your career as an artist and it's it's, it's dope your works are always mind-blowing and your Thank use you, of brother. colors and everything like come on you guys who don't know chief father you better i don't know what you're doing with your internet man you better check this guy out he is awesome he's an awesome artist his narrative his technique is everything is just beautiful man it's and it's quite it's quite awesome man you should just check it out and um we're about to wrap, wrap this up thanks man so like do you have like any words to give no they're def as, as as 
much as you know it, or maybe not, there are people who still look up to you. There are people who look, they might not, they're probably in your followers just like watching your updates and see what you post. But do you have anything to say to the people out there, people watching this and listening? Yeah. What I have to say is, <laughs> I think what has always been on my mind is how this whole thing is it's a marathon. Hmm. It's not it's not a sprint. Yeah. And I've always made the mistake of um I'd always made the mistake of trying to you know when, when you are running a sprint you put in all your energy. Yeah, all your energy. But then it's a good marathon runner knows that knows when to conserve energy knows when to put in the energy knows when to relax knows when to rest yeah and it's very important for artists as well it doesn't work now it doesn't work in two years it will definitely work as long as you continue yeah i know this is like it sounds like a cliche thing to yeah. say <laughs> but then i'm going to be like very sincere even when you think it works it would also stop working. Like, I don't know how to, like, let me put, let me rephrase that. Like, even when you think you've gotten to a point, there are also going to be downs that will make you feel like, mm. like, no, man, I don't think I can continue. So one thing I've learned is that people that I look up to, what I've noticed that they have is like an insane level of confidence. And that's something that every artist should have, not just in your process, but in the fact that it would work out, that uh-huh. everything would work out, yeah? And we always have this distorted reality of, like, there are people at the top, so you have to work, 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 yeah. work till you get to the top. But then even the people that you look up to have the times when they are so down, they don't, they are not selling works, nothing is working. Yeah. You know, I'm they have, you, they are, they are, have, I've been they have, through that. I've they have through bad that. times and they are, they are questioning themselves. Like, is this, was this a one time thing? You know, yeah. am I still going to get back there? But that's why the process is always like, it's process is very important because the same process that makes you understand that the painting would definitely get better at the end also makes you understand that there are times in the painting when you feel so excited and there are times in the painting where you feel down, but that doesn't mean you should stop the painting. Yeah, those times when it feels like you don't even know what you're doing on the painting. Just, just, man, all you just need to do is create. Yeah. Like, any, any way possible. Yeah, that's really beautiful. So, <clears throat> guys, you've heard it from the man himself. This has been mind-blowing. It's been revealing. It's been awesome. I mean, I've had fun. I don't know about y'all out there. And um, you already know how we do it here in the atmosphere. We don't just vibe and catch crews because we're young people. We also learn from the guests that we have here from ourselves. We learn stuff. We we ask questions. We, at the same time, have fun. But there's always something to take out of, of the whole thing. And this has been another wonderful episode. And with my man here, Chief Fada, man. it's been nice having you on nice, the show. It's been nice having you too. Like, this and... is my first, first ever podcast. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You, well, we're probably going to bring you here some other time again. Oh, well, and I <laughs> we really appreciate you taking our time to come be oh, with us anytime, today and anytime man and it's really beautiful so fam for me your regular host katie otaro see you on another episode and my last words stay creative stay young don't forget to have fun peace out